When it comes to turf grass safety, the equipment wash area is one area you don't want to overlook. Jeremy Wharton, president of safety and compliance company JW & Associates, talks to GCSAA TV about cleaning best practices and explains why the wash rack is a crucial location for golf course investment. It begins, Wharton says, with a wash rack's water capturing potential. This is an example of, of a state-of-the-art wash rack. I mean, this is a, a rack that's got the money to be able to capture the water, the wash water, with any petroleum products, maybe chemical byproducts, things like that. Capture it and recycle the water and to be able to capture so it doesn't go into storm drains, doesn't go into the turf, things like that. But even if you don't have that, just capturing that water is the main thing. You don't want to start washing equipment, cleaning equipment, over storm drains, over open, by next to open bodies of water, and, and contaminate the environment at, if at all costs. Wharton says while many golf courses make efforts to contain wash water, many older courses are reluctant to invest in retrofit systems. A lot of times we've seen where they've maybe captured in drainage systems and then used sup pumps to maybe pump that water back into a tank uh, to then be re recycled or reused in another application. Um, but it is, it's very difficult. And this is probably one of the toughest, most expensive uh, fixes, if you will, that, that a course would have. This and maybe a mixed load area. Uh, if you're not retrofitted with state-of-the-art equipment, you don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars oftentimes to be able to spend on the right equipment to be able to do this. It's tough. Outside of having a proper water containment system, there are other cleaning precautions turf professionals should take during the equipment washing process. Some of the things you want to be aware of whenever you're cleaning equipment, uh, obviously hearing protection when anytime you're around something that's loud, eye protection if you're going to be spraying with air or with water to make sure particles aren't coming up inside. Uh, one thing about the air hoses is that you want to have an OSHA approved nozzle which has a bypass so that if you were to put the air nozzle directly onto the skin it wouldn't inject and cause issues. Uh, as far as the water is concerned, again, making sure that you're not spraying the water so it's going all over the place and it's actually being contained to an area so that anything that may be on that piece of equipment still that could be considered hazardous is contained. Warden suggests that operators first remove larger debris like turf or grass with air hoses, then use water combined with cleaners, solvents, or soaps to remove the remaining debris while cleaning equipment. Following these best practices, he says, can reduce safety hazards or potential violations. A lot of times in wash areas, you want to look for areas of containment where the course has at least made an effort to try to contain the wash water itself, to contain any of the debris itself. Uh, the hoses, the air hoses we talked about with the ocean nozzles, not having an approved nozzle, uh, but just having a, a, an air nozzle that could puncture the skin and inject air into someone's skin and, and hurt them. Not having the correct ear, uh, hearing protection, eye protection, uh, slip, trip, and fall hazards up and around some of the areas. Uh, that's often what we find in, in these areas. 